Hey everyone, this is Danny Dignan, also known as Imagine It, and I'm here today with Black Octopus Sound to take a look at the top 10 key new features within Serum 2. I've got Serum 2 fired up here, so we'll take a look at what's going on in this new update, and then I'll show you a couple of presets that I've designed using some of these new features. Okay, so here we are in Serum 2, and right away we can see a few new features. First of all, we have a mix tab, which we'll go into a little bit later. We now have another oscillator, so we have an oscillator C. The noise oscillator has been moved over to the right-hand side, and we can see the noise now, which is cool. We have another filter, so that means yes, two filters, which is awesome. Another four macros have been added. We now have a clip feature here, which I'll get into, and an ARP. So the number one key feature, of course, is the addition of another oscillator. Before, we only had two, now we have three main oscillators. Now the number two key feature, and probably one of the biggest updates to Serum, is that we have more oscillator types available to us. We have the usual wavetable oscillators, but now we have multi-sample oscillators, we have a sampler, and granular and spectral engines. Now this is probably the biggest update to Serum. Before, of course, we only had the wavetable oscillators, but now we have all of these different types available to us and they come loaded with samples as well. If we click this little dash right here, a tab comes up that says factory, and this is a folder where we have a bunch of multi-sampled instruments available to us. Let's go to the strings and choose Celli LE. Very cool, nice and lush, rich sound. Really excited about this feature in particular for a couple of reasons. First of all, having all these instruments just right here at our fingertips is a very, very cool addition that I totally was not expecting. And then also number two is when I'm designing hybrid instruments. It's nice that there are multi-sampled instruments available for the organic layer. When you're using just a single sample that's playing a single root note, sometimes sampler engines can degrade the quality of the sample and maybe that might make the synth sound a little less natural and a little bit more digital. So having all of these notes available to us on the keyboard makes it really easy to make believable, realistic, and organic sounding hybrid instrument sounds. And as I mentioned, there are so many different kinds of instruments we can choose from here. We have bass, choir, drums, both acoustic and electronic, some keys, mallets, plucked instruments, strings, of course, synth sounds, winds, just a nice variety of samples to play with. This is a really awesome feature. Let's take a look at the granular engine. We'll select a sample, thinking maybe a flute. So that's our flute sound. Of course, you're getting that kind of granular degradation that's happening. If we wanted to select a certain point, a certain part of the sample to play with, we can go down here to one shot and we can turn this into either a forward motion loop, a reverse motion loop, or a forward reverse loop. Let's choose that. And these right here are going to be our looping playheads. So we have our beginning and ending. Now, just as an example, maybe we go to the effects tab here. Let's add some reverb. We'll make this a hall reverb and we'll turn the size up and the mix. And with very little effort at all, we have a really cool tonal cinematic atmosphere sound. Very eerie sound here. I like this a lot. Let's take a look at the spectral engine. We'll choose another sample. I'm thinking a piano. Now, another key feature is we have some updates to the warp modes. So here in alt warp, we have the usual stuff, the bend plus, bend minus, and all that that we had from the previous version of Serum. But we now have some new ones. We have a low pass filter and a high pass filter that we can inject into the oscillator. So this is really great if you wanna apply maybe some reduction in the highs or lows just in the oscillator and not have to use a filter or an EQ. We can also inject some of the distortion modes here. So if I wanted to maybe make this sine wave a bit of a square wave, we can choose tube, turn it all the way up. And now we have a square wave without having to choose a square wave or maybe use this distortion somewhere else in the effects chain or down the line to create that quality. Maybe let's choose diode two. Let's see what that sounds like. So this is awesome for harmonic manipulation, again, without having to reach for distortion units or anything like that. We can do that right away here in the oscillator with these new warp modes. Further down the list, we have our FM, AM and RM, but we have a new addition, which is phase distortion, and we'll inject a little bit of oscillator B into oscillator A using phase distortion.
Now, of course, this is gonna be awesome for designing reeses and kind of complex basses because you get a little bit of fluctuation and variation in a very static sound, just like holding down a note. You're gonna get little differences in each note. And in my opinion, that can lend to creating maybe more dynamic, varied sounds, which just lends to more believable sounds, in my opinion. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth key feature in the Serum 2 update, which is more, more, and more with the filters. So in the previous version of Serum, we of course only had one filter to play with. Now we have two. And what's great about this in the oscillator window specifically is we can now use one filter for sound design processes, while we can use the other one maybe for more sound design processes, or maybe more traditional uses, such as high pass and low pass filtering, and we don't have to use just one filter or maybe sacrifice the filter or EQs within the effects tab. There's also been some new filters added. We have our usual normal multi flanges and miscellaneous filters. Here in S2, we have a few new ones to choose from. We have WSP, we have DJ Mixer, which has the same characteristic of a very particular DJ Tech Company's mixer filter. I'm sure you are familiar which one I am mentioning. We have another called Diffuser, and if we turn stages up here, we get a very juicy and squishy kind of sound. And again, another kind of tone characteristic similar to another sound design company's very particular plugin. Maybe you know which one I'm talking about. Nonetheless, really cool sound, and this is gonna be awesome for really squishy and again, wet kind of sound design. Now the last new filter type that I wanna to touch on is this PZSVF. So here we have absolutely nothing happening until we click on this pencil here. And this is a filter graph. So we now have a phaser. So essentially you can design your own filters, which is so cool. Okay, so that's a few key features just immediately in the oscillator tab, at least just the first half of the oscillator tab. Let's take a look at some of the new stuff going on in the bottom half. Like I mentioned, we have four new macros to play with, which is great. Just more sound design and automation macroing control. We have our usual envelope setups, but over here in the LFOs, we have some crazy new stuff that's happening. If I go over here to where it says normal, click on this down arrow, we have a few new options to play with. Path, Chaos Lorenz, Chaos Rossler, and a sample and hold LFO. Let's start with Chaos Lorenz, and this is just going to be crazy right off the bat. Yeah, that's not our usual LFO look, right? That is just nuts. If we go ahead and turn on filter one, let's apply LFO one to the cutoff. We get a really crazy LFO behavior. It's pretty complex, but so fun and so easy to understand too. I mean, really, it's just a visual representation of what's happening. And it's chaos too, so it's gonna be random and that's just going to lend to maybe very unique sounds, huge variance and change over time. Let's choose Chaos Rossler. Now, for me, the coolest feature that's been added to the LFOs is this path feature. Okay, so we don't have anything going on here, and you're probably wondering, uh, where is our shape? Well, we're gonna make our own shape. Let's go to this box here, click on that. Let's take this point here, maybe put it up here somewhere, and we'll make another point, which creates a line. And we just get this forward and back motion. If we draw another point, and then maybe another, maybe another over here, up here, over there, and just make something really strange. We can drag these points too. Something a bit abstract, I suppose. We've now designed our own very weird and unique LFO, which is such a cool feature. I mean, I've never seen this before. It has kind of a 3D characteristic. It's just, it's so different and so unique. So now take a look at the clip feature. So this is the clip window, and essentially it's a piano roll and an arrangement tool. For example, if I go to bank here, we have all these different kinds of chord progressions, some drum patterns, some guitar voicings, a Duda e-piano noodles, and of course we can draw our own. For this demonstration, let's choose something like Duda chords. Let's take a listen. Cool, so yeah, we have this chord progression. 
a melody, and this is just a great way to get ideas down in Serum. I mean, you can arrange a full song. Like for example, we have 12 boxes down here, which correspond to a 12 note chromatic octave. And these 12 boxes are also represented on this piano roll down here. So we have this first box as the C, we have the second box as the D flat C sharp, third box is the D, so on and so forth. And each box can have different chord progressions, maybe some melodies, whatever you'd like. So very, very cool stuff. This is a great way to get ideas out just in Serum. I mean, you can really, again, make a full song. You can have all different kinds of drum grooves immediately available to you. And of course, with the multi-sample feature, you can have a kick, snare, and hi-hat, and you can have 12 different grooves of those instruments playing here. Just so cool. So many things that you can do with this clip feature. Let's take a look at the next key feature, the ARP. Just as you'd imagine, it's an ARP, but it's so much more than just an ARP. There's so many cool things we can set up here. First, of course, we can set up our patterns. If we wanna choose different kinds of uh, ARP pattern shapes, we have that here available to us. We can, of course, change the rate. We can transpose the ARP. We can change the playback behavior. And much like the clip feature, we have 12 boxes here from which we can choose 12 different ARP patterns. Okay, so that wraps up the oscillator window and all of the really major key features that have been added to it. Let's take a look at the mix window now and then wrap up by taking a look at some of the new things going on in the effects tab. So this is one of the last key features that I wanna talk about, which is the mix window. Now for me, this is a huge key feature for one very simple reason. It's a very simple and easy way to visualize our instrument all its layers and all the processing without having to go between windows. It's all just here in one. Here we have our sub oscillator. We have oscillator A, B, C, the noise oscillator, our two filters, and we have buses. So yes, we can do parallel processing in Serum, which is so cool. Okay, so that's the mix tab. Let's take a look at the effects tab. Okay, so there are a few massive key features within the effects tab. Number one, of course, we have our bus processing. So we have a bus processing rack here for bus one, and then a processing rack for bus two, and we can separate these. So if we want bus one to have maybe some compression, maybe some flange for whatever reason, bus two is where we're gonna do our parallel distortion. We can do that and we're not gonna have all these effects kind of creating a big soup, right? Everything's just very particular and split for the different uses. So that's one of the big key features within the effects tab. Now, probably my favorite regarding the effects is the fact that we can add multiple instances of one effect. So if we wanna have four OTTs, we can do that. If we wanna have something like that, just reverb, phaser, four distortions, whatever. So what's really cool about this is we can have a distortion for really destructive use and then another distortion to maybe warm up the sound and then another distortion to do some other kind of harmonic manipulation. The compressors, of course, we can just totally brighten and expand the sound. There's just so many cool things that you can do now with being able to have multiple instances of one effect. With such a big update, we're also going to get some new effects. The first addition to the new effects list is the Bode effect, and this is a frequency shifter. I like using it personally for making those rubbery kind of metallic shimmery sounds. Now, probably my favorite effect that's been added is the convolve effect, which is a convolution reverb. And that means that we have a bunch of IRs or impulse responses that we can choose from. And this is going to be a great effect to use when creating hybrid instruments to inject that little bit more of realism from impulse responses, which are usually going to be real recordings of real environments. We have a splitter for the low mids and highs, a splitter for the mids and sides. And then lastly, my other favorite effect, the utility feature. 
This is where we can invert our polarity. We have a simple low pass filter and a high pass filter. We can mono our sound and we can choose the crossover frequency of the mono effect. We can widen the sound and we can also pan it as well. It's just a simple effect, a simple addition, but so powerful because it allows everything else to do maybe more interesting things. But that about wraps up 10 or so key features within Serum 2. I've had some sound design sessions with it. I made a couple of presets that I'd like to share with you and show off a couple of these new features. So let's go ahead and check those out. Here's one showcasing a bunch of choruses and a bunch of distortions. Here's a sort of multi-sample synth arp. And then here's a cinematic atmosphere. So yeah, just a couple of sounds that I've designed using some of these key features that I mentioned and very quickly made, I must say, too. And that's not a big thing about like, oh, I know how to make sounds and all that stuff. I mean, quickly and easily made just because of how intuitive Serum 2 is and because of all the different features. Probably my favorite being the new oscillator types. I'm really stoked on those new oscillators. But I'm curious to hear which of these new features are your favorite? Do you have one in particular that you find yourself reaching for more frequently than others? Maybe all of them, maybe one I didn't mention. Let us know in the comments below and I'm sure I will be back very soon to share more Serum 2 insights with you. See you soon.